Hello everyone, this is Daniel, and um, I'm going to be preaching to you about, you know, why the rapture is true. And there's going to be a lot of theories about why we have to go through the rapture, or why this is God's wrath on us no matter what, or pre-wrath, or why... We have to go through the tribulation, or go through the um, tribulation until mid times. Okay, let me tell you about God's grace and love. You know, Jesus is love, and it does say that in the Bible. And just look it up online. Just look up. Just look up. Um, yeah, I just look it up in like Google just to see where it says Jesus is love and online and. Just look up on Open Bible Info. If it's not there, then it's not there, I guess. But, yeah, you know, it's not uncommon that it's not there. But it's common that it could be there. You know, it's like Jesus is love. That's what I believe right now. He is not hatred, but he is love and equal in wrath. So, he loves his own children like he is like he loves his own children like he loves us like he, we are his children so anyway just wanted to let you know at that point and now to the rapture why do we have to go through the rapture no I meant why do we have to go through tribulations and not go through the rapture why do we have to go through the tribulations and suffer through it let me tell you what's going on. One quarter of the population of the whole entire world, two billion people, are going to die in the first half of the uh, tribulation. And it turns out that almost everyone else dies in the second half. Alright. Doesn't sound graceful to me if we have to endure through the, 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 you know, the horror of it all that people would all die off all at once. That's kind of horrifying, you know? And that God would let us suffer like that? Now that's not God to let us suffer like that. Actually, what it sounds like is really it's what Satan is trying to do. However, Jesus is so much love that he would not let that happen. Matter of fact, he's going to judge it, the entire nation and the world population to actually go through the trip like go through the tribulation because they don't accept him actually it's not just because of that why is he not letting anyone you know if, if anyone doesn't accept him why do we have to um, go through his wrath because he's trying to get rid of sin you see he gives us a time of grace a time of the law before that, a time to decide which is right and wrong. So first we had to decide which was right and wrong, then there was law, then there was grace to prove that we are sinners. So we chose both right and wrong in that sort of sense because of Adam and Eve. Because Adam chose a sin. Alright, that's beside the point. Don't you think that during the time of grace, that Jesus died for all of us, you know, for God so loved the world so much, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. You know? That's John 3.16, by the way. And, if anyone that says, well, if that's God, well, isn't Jesus something else? No, Jesus is the Lord. And let me just tell you, prove it one way or another. Look it up on the Bible that says Jesus the, the God. Because I think in Matthew or John, it says that Jesus said that he is that he is. He said, I am that I am. And the, only God can say that, you know? And the Pharisees knew that he was just either blaspheming God, or he said, that he, who he, 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 said who he said he was, that he is God. You're wondering, okay, well, 
he was not, you know, if he's saying that Jesus did, was a failed man, you're, you're being like the Pope in that sense, but that's just beside the point. Why are so many lives being saved today? Why are people accepting the, you know, the true salvation of Jesus? And I'm going to get to that point later. Why is everyone, you know, choosing Christ other than death? Why are people being saved today? Why are people finding out how to be saved? Well, if you really think about it, salvation is really a point of you knowing who did right, who, who you knowing who did the, the right thing, and who he did, who did all the holy things, and was perfected, and who was God, and all of that, who ended up, you know, saving every soul from condemnation by being perfect and dying on the cross. People already know that Jesus is the one that, that, that died on the cross, but do they really know that they can take all their sins away and that they are hopeless, you know, sinners? And then let me just point to you, so, let, let me point to your salvation right now. Whoever believes that Jesus took all of your sins away on the cross, all of your sins, every single one of them, and not only that, that Jesus is the one that will be coming the Holy Spirit and the Father. He is all one. And if anyone believes that in all that, well, the one thing they did was said, Lord Jesus, I want your Holy Spirit. Forgive me for, um, forgive me for I'm a sinner. Have mercy on me for I'm a sinner. Because Jesus did say, Lord, forgive them for they know not, not what they do. And he also, you know, gave us salvation, you know? Now, this is the simple effect, salvation, all in one statement. Choose the Holy Spirit to go within you. That's your salvation. Once you believe and have a relationship with him, that's your salvation. Because really all that you're doing is choosing the Holy Spirit to be within you, Born again, really, all you're doing is having a relationship with God. Because if anyone chooses Jesus, really, it's choosing Him and it's choosing life over death. You know, holiness over sin and Jesus over Satan. And this point is, if you're wondering why your life is so miserable, or if you're wondering if you're ever saved, know that you've chosen Jesus. And in, the, in one of the ex examples of being saved is, you're spreading the word to everyone else. You're trying to save everyone else. This is an example of being saved. It's the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, kindness, peacefulness, gentleness, you know? You're not harsh. You're not, you know, trying to condemn everyone, you're not cursing, you know, things like that. And the gentleness is letting everyone know about Christ. You know, then there's also God who is equally as much as wrath. And you know what God does? He says, well, you know, son or daughter, creation, you have one choice. And you have two choices. Your one choice is either me or something else or earth, you know. You can only choose either me, which is life, or yourself, which is death. You only have two choices. You only get to choose one. From this point on, this will be the determining point of your life. If you choose me, then congratulations. Well done. If you don't want to choose me, then depart from me. You who do lawlessness because you don't want to be part of me. And the lawless ones will get their lawlessness by himself. He's he's gonna do it through his own depressed, you know, wrathful mind. That he's 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 gonna do it through his depressed uh, depressed and wrathful vengeance of his power. 
that anyone that does, not, that does not believe in him will get the eternal separation from God. Which, by the way, is the second death. The second death is eternal, you know, dying eternally in the lake of fire. Let me tell you what death is. In the um, physical, ter um, in the physical, you know, basically in the physical body, if you fall very deep into hell, and if you basically stay there for like a minute or fall, isn't it an instant death? And then all that heat and all, not no longer breathing because you're dead? That's your second death. You know, you're, you're pretty much like you're dead. But in a spiritual sense, really, you're pretty much, you know, dead and not alive and not moving. You're just a rag doll, hopeless, without any breath of air. Not like a zombie, but really lifeless. In a dead cave full of rot, full of worms, full of fire, full of f f fearful demons and scary demons and fearful sights, I meant to say, and, and demons everywhere, and full of screaming and pain and agony. That's what sin really is. Unfortunately, we chose that in, Adam, in the Garden of Eden. God said specifically, if you don't want to die and go to hell, don't eat the, the don't eat either the tree thereof. Eden, uh, like Eve ate it first, so she chose hell, and Adam was deceived by Eve. Satan is evil. He wants company. However, God gave us a choice. Either you choose him. Or two is your life, which is, you know, death and Satan. And, you know, to gr congratulate this, you know, people don't need to fret about this because he came for peace. However, he also came for a sword. He's a prince of peace, but he's dividing the sheep from the goats because many people do not choose him. Some people think they choose him, but they choose to be wrathful or evil. They want to deceive others, and they, and they put up a full front of holiness, but they put up a full front of evil inside. No wonder, they, no wonder Jesus calls the people wolves in sheep's clothing. Yes, they look good, basically. You know, they do look good on the outside. They look like sheaves, uh, she sheeps, but on the inside, they're wolves, ravening wolves to devour anyone. Now, what does a Pharisee do? I'm trying to think right now. What does a Pharisee do? They, they crucify Jesus, but what do the Pharisees do? They're full of the law. They're full of brokenness inside by pointing too much law to, to the law and that we're not saved and that they'd rather, you know, choose all these things we must do in order to be saved and do all these hoops in order to be saved. Don't you get it? They're leading you to hoops to have to be saved. Yet to how to be saved, there's no hoops, there's no pattern, there's no anything, there's no law. But Jesus is the perfect justified law. They did everything by himself. He paid the price in full for, our, for, for all of our sins. Matter of fact, if you think about it, there's only one salvation. There's only one path to heaven, not many, only one, and it's in Jesus. And what do I mean by in Jesus? It's by choosing Jesus to be part of your life, to have the Holy Spirit within you, to be born again. Choose Jesus, and then you'll preach to others, 
and have a, and have a heart of love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, you know, goodness, faithfulness, and you know, patience and and self-control. Against these, you know, there is no there there's no law. But if a preacher took his shirt off and preached, the people would become confused. If the evangelist did that, the people wonder, is this man sick or is he perverted? Is he not mentally there or is he evil? But if a person is preaching, is preaching the truth and love, and is trying to give an example of you know how kind he is to others and know that he still has faults but no matter what you know we've we're not perfect you know not in performance not in you know no one's perfect but we still continue to preach the good news to everyone because we're all broken people preaching to the whole world no one's perfect we're not holy right now in heaven we are why on earth? On earth. We are, you know, still sinners because the Bible did say, oh, I think it was somewhere in the Bible, you know, in the New Testament, obviously. It, it said, if we, we are to say to, uh, if we are to say to ourselves that we have no sin, no blame, no anything like that, we are, you know, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. To say that we have no sin in us, to say we should not sin, the truth is not in us. And to say that we have no sin after salvation, also, I would say the same thing. Because, let's not be ignorant. Since, let, let me have a tally of everyone, and to say, did they curse? Did they, were they brutal? Do they look at themselves in vain? Do they have sexual thoughts or anything like that? Did they sin, brethren? Because all they did was prove that they have love, even though they still sin. But Christ in us tells us, you know, one sin is, you know, you know, one sin means that we're going to hell. And that's pretty much the truth. Only one, one, one sin is capable of sending us to hell. And it's through the curse of Adam that we age, and not only that, we die. And the curse of Adam is sin. And the sin was invaded by the devil. Sin was invented by pride, by the devil. So really, if we're to be honest to ourselves, we all die, right? So we all have sin, no matter what. Let's say, for instance, we were born again, and we didn't die, and we lived the exact same age, and we looked the same, and we didn't die, because we were perfected and we didn't have blame in us until the rapture happened. Do you think that would be weird? I know that sounds weird. But since we have sin, you know, that means we also have a whole lot of things to know that we have a lot of blame. Matter of fact, I have a tally for that. We sin I would say we have 70,000 thoughts per minute, not per day, 70,000 thoughts per day, and we, I would say we sin around 60 to 55,000 times a day. If we add all the days up in our, our lifetime, not only would we have near 100,000 or more days of our lifetime, if that's like 30, that would be 100,000. Let's be like um, 90. 
that'd be 300,000 dice. If we had 70 time, if we had 60,000 times 300,000, ah, that would be well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would be like billions times, that would be like times a billion of times we sinned in our lifetime. And that's my point. We have over, we, we have sinned over several billion times in our lifetime. Yet we don't keep count because we have views and thoughts of anger and we attach ourselves to negative things and everything like that. And we don't, we don't think about the, thin, the, the sins that are in the part of our lives. It's just too much for some people to bear murdering people, killing people for their country, sending people to hell, all of these things. Just remember that. And just remember that God is just to forgive us, to forget, to forgive us of all of our sins. He is very just to forgive us of, of, all, of, our, of, all, of all of our sins. And He doesn't care who you are. It just matters that you don't mock the Holy Spirit. Now, I've heard of someone doing it in his whole heart, saying that... I don't want to do this, but, you know... Saying things like about the sheep with no eyes. I don't want to talk about what he talked about, but... He said it in his whole heart. Only judge can... You know, God can, can judge about... Only God can judge that. However... If it's certain that he's mocking the Holy Spirit, then there's going to be a curse on him whenever I talk to him and try to save him. There's going to be a curse right there, and you've, all, you've already seen it. Some of you, you know? How do I talk about him, and, you know? He just frustrates me, you know? He really does. A whole lot of people that are in Lordship Salvationists, you know, you know, the law preachers, you know. Many of them have chosen to mock the Holy Spirit. Mock him that is in us without even knowing that he mocked him, not us. Because if you think about it, if he chooses to mock us and have hatred towards us, and try to be sending, telling, sending people to hell and just saying, oh, these people, you know, are this and this with their Holy Spirit. And I'm better than that. If you chose the wrong spirit, I don't know. But if you chose the wrong spirit to do that on, more than not, you might be likely that you've mocked the Holy Spirit. You know, there's a certain time for that as well. But, you know, BC. The only way you're sent to hell is that you don't have the Holy Spirit at that time, even though you did have the Holy Spirit before. Anyway, that's that's one thing. Today, the Grace Age, or maybe not today, depending on when you're doing this. That is mocking the Holy Spirit, what Jesus said during that time and in the time to come. And, in the future, in the tribulation, the one thing that is singing in hell is Mark of the Beast. It's saluting yourself to Satan, even though you know very well that this is Satan. Anyway, what does this all have to do in common? That he chose Satan, not God. Some people do it without even knowing about it. Like Saul, back in the time of David when he you know fled and had people you know chanting on the dead body of a prophet and he killed himself he didn't know what he was doing but he chose Satan then other people the Pharisees some of them didn't even know about it and they mocked the Holy Spirit and they very well of that 
but even they don't know about it. They don't care. They just do the horrible th deeds. And I already saw someone that was mocking him in an interesting way. And you know, mockery can be very creative. But I'm not going to talk about it. That's not what I'm all about. And then there's the more obvious one. Just, you know, choosing Satan. All of it, all of this has to do with choosing Satan. Choosing not the, the brethren of the life. Anyway, I think I've said enough in this book note. However, this is a tribulation now. I think I'm going to call this video the tribulation and all that. All I'm going to say right now is choose Jesus. That's the only way in your hope into heaven. Choose Jesus. Because that will be him saying congratulations, well done. Oh, faithful serpent, servant. And you know, and you have done things that you haven't even done. Matter of fact, if you choose Jesus, my video is running out of time. If you choose Jesus, you choose the actions that everyone else did. You've done all the great things that everyone else has done, including Diamond Desivications to me, to Preaching You, and me to Diamond Desivication, and Tim Henderson, and Chelsea Bedell, and, um, the, no, not him, and, um, uh, maybe Pro Chooch, and, um, and this guy that, um, Watch Women, and not only that, Watch Women on the Wall, all those honored people, and not only that, who else? Who else do I want to love and give honor to? You? Barry Scarborough and uh, Robert Breaker. All these people are honored. And we're all honored together. We're all like each other. We're all in the body of Christ. We all did the same actions. Preaching to, to the world of the lost world, on the dying world, that this is who Christ is. That he died on the cross for all of our sins. And that if we believe in him, if we choose Him, all we have to do is believe in Him by choosing Him. Believing Him is having a relationship with Him. We all point, we all point to Christ, but then the Pharisees do not point to Christ. They just point to self. You gotta remember that, okay? Alright, I'll be done now, okay?